Have you ever gone to a restaurant only to find out that it's so noisy you can't hear your dinner conversation? It can be frustrating. You're trying to communicate something important and there is this ns, 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 drowning out just about everything. What? I can't quite understand. Your pet hamster simulates digital backcurrent? Wait, what? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if you could find out ahead of time just what the noise situation was before you committed to your entree? <laughs> Especially if the signal part of the signal-to-noise equation is somehow important to you. Well, we can't help for restaurants, but Cadence does have a nice solution for doing noise analysis and dynamic comparators. Does that help any? Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. If you're trying to design an analog-to-digital converter, you'll be wanting to understand the noise in your dynamic comparator. In this episode of Chalk Talk, I'm talking to Art Sheldonbrand of Cadence Design Systems about dynamic comparator noise analysis, which still, unfortunately, won't help you pick a nice, quiet dinner spot. Before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about dynamic comparator noise analysis. Hi, Art. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's good to be here, Amelia. What are we going to talk about? All right, so I want to design a low-power, high-speed ADC, but I'm having trouble finding a way to make it better. How do I add more bits? Okay, well, let's start by talking about the ADC you want to design. It's probably going to be a successor approximation ADC. These are have no DC power, and they're very fast. Okay, but where does this noise come from? So usually the noisiest block in the ADC is the comparator, the dynamic comparator, and that's the block we're looking at now. It's also called a strong arm latch. Okay, why is this hard to analyze? Well, let's think about it a little bit. Traditionally, a comparator is a linear circuit. That means it's always operating. It has a static operating point. When I use a latch, it has a dynamic operating point. Normally, the outputs are at VDD. And when I want to make check something, I tell it, let's make a check. Okay. And when it does that, it makes a check very quickly. But again, it doesn't have a static operating point. It's moving. It just only moves. It goes between VDD and its decision. So it's a little bit different than anything we traditionally have analyzed with SPICE. Okay. So if it doesn't have a static operating point, how do I use noise analysis? It kind of seems like a moving target. Well, people have been working on this problem for a while, and they came up with a methodology that was based on using a technology we call transient noise analysis. Okay. That means while we're simulating it operating, we're also simulating it how noise affects it. We can look at this plot here, and this kind of illustrates the point. So if we have a large offset at the input, then sometimes we're going to get an error. Uh -huh. If we have a very small error at offset at the input, then we're going to get an error more often. And we can plot that curve of offset versus error, and that looks like an error function. And we can put that in Excel, and we can fit, and we can actually calculate the noise. In this example, we got about 4.4 millivolts of noise. Okay, so this is good. But how do I know how good the results are? Or is this just a kind of a trust me type of deal? Well, using that methodology is, we've looked at the problem, we've come up with an alternative. We can actually calculate the noise at each point. And what you can see in this plot is there's a lot of variation between the points. That means there's we need to run a longer simulation, a more accurate simulation to get a more accurate number. What we did instead of that in this case is we just averaged up all those points and it gave us about 4.42 millivolts of noise. So it's a little bit different number than before, but it's one we can trust a little bit more. Okay, so I think I got it, but how do I reduce noise? So what we end up doing is we can't use this methodology to solve that problem. We have to use it, go at it a different way. And we're going to go back to the way we would have done it before. We're going to try and trick SPICE into thinking that this is a linear circuit. Okay. And it's not a linear circuit all the time, but while it's making its decision, it is a linear circuit. So we, if we highlight that little region there in the, where the red box, if we look at its noise during that operating point, operating time, we can actually figure out what the noise is. Okay. So let's go do that. So each one of those points in the last simulation, we've actually calculated on a surface the noise at each point on a surface. And what we see is we get a region where it converges. That linear region uh -huh. is that area inside the red box. And that ends up giving us the same number as transient noise. It gives us that 4.42 millivolts of noise. 
So this isn't the, like the futon I had in college because it looks really similar. <laughs> no, it's kind of a mathematical artifact. Try that. <laughs> Okay, Art, I don't think you actually said where the noise is coming from, though. Well, this is the first step. Calculating the noise is the first step, and trusting the measurement is part of the first step. So now we've calculated the noise, and we can trust the measurement. What we can do in the next step is we can look at where the noise is coming from. Inside our design environment, there's a capability called Noise Summary, and that tells us the noise that comes from each transistor in our circuit. And what we can see is, in this case, as we'd expect, the input differential pair gives us a lot of noise. And we can see some other transistors also give us a significant amount of noise. Okay, so Art, can you give me a quick summary of your main points? I think I might need it. Okay, so there are two methods for doing the noise analysis, transient noise and periodic noise, and both give the same results. You can use transient noise when the problem can't be solved with periodic noise, when you're trying to do something with verification. So if you're doing an ADC, transient noise is well suited for that problem. In this case, because we're designing a block, and we want to know what the noise is from each component inside that block, periodic noise is a better choice. So you can think of it like periodic noise is a design tool and transient noise is a verification tool. Ah, okay, that makes sense. So do you have any real data to throw my way, Art, or are these just PowerPoint results? Oh, of course it's just PowerPoint. <laughs> nah, let's take a look at some actual measured results. And this is for an ADC where we've actually applied the full methodology. We've only been talking about the dynamic comparator here, but we take the dynamic comparator numbers and we put it into our overall calculation for the ADC and we compare the results with measured results. And we see for measured we're getting 6.23 effective number of bits. And for the, using our model, we're getting 6.18 effective number of bits. And this is actually for a pretty aggressive design. It's a 7-bit, 3 gigasample per second ADC. So it's actually testing the methodology pretty well. Cool. Um, and how does this fit into the big picture at Cadence? So at Cadence, we have Spectre. That's our simulation platform. And inside of that, we have different technologies to solve different problems. So for transient noise analysis, we have Spectre APS. does transient spice simulations very quickly. We have Spectre RF to do that periodic noise analysis. And we have another technology we call Spectre XPS, and that's more for fast spice applications like memory. Ah, okay. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Art. My pleasure. Let's do it again soon. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find out more information about dynamic comparator noise analysis from Cadence Design Systems. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the On Demand section of EE Journal or check out YouTube, keyword, EE Journal.